You're listening to ABA One-on-One Podcast. The American Basketball Association is the largest pro league in the world. Some great opportunities for team ownership are available and the cost may surprise you. If you've ever thought about team ownership in a pro league, give us the opportunity to help make it a reality. Reach out to us for more info. For USA teams at www.abaliveaction.com. In Australia, go to www.abaleagueaustralia.com. Hi guys, CJ here. We currently have a few positions available for relationship managers. If you would like the opportunity to work in sports marketing, this could be it. The ABA is the largest pro league in the world and partnered with the AAU representing over 700,000 athletes around the world. Building business relationships and helping bring new audiences to every business we're working with is the goal. You're not limited to one state or region. Businesses partnering with sports is always a win-win for the community. Sound interesting? Then drop us an email and get more information at jobs at aba101.club. And we'll get back to you right away. Come explore the No Strings Attached E-News online magazine. Our global array of authors inspire, delight, and educate with practical and entertaining articles. And with Focus On, we help producers of film, web series, and other video content attract a wider audience. Plus, your project can stream on Roku, Apple TV, Fire TV, and more with our media partners E360 TV and NETV. No Strings Attached E-News, focusing on human interest. Advertising available, nsaen.com. Hey guys, it's time for a new episode of ABA One on One. Open up, uh, yeah. Open up now. Open up. Open up, yeah. Open up. Open up. Open up now. Hey guys, welcome back to another ABA one-on-one. Uh, today in the house, we have Pete Gillen. Uh, I've got Brian back with me and, and Rick. And, and man, this should be really fun. Pete, welcome to ABA one-on-one, man. It's uh, good to have you in the house. Thanks, EJ. Uh, Brian and Rick, great to be with you guys. All right, all right. Appreciate it. Great having it. you, man. Great having you. Yep, all yep. right. So I kind of, I'm usually the lead-in guy here. I got a couple questions. Uh, actually, I have more than a couple of questions, but yeah, you, two in last time you, on. you had sixty-one for our last guest. <laughs> yeah, but no, we're not we're not going there with that because I don't. I pay, I pay times too valuable, but I, <laughs> okay. you know, a couple of things I always start off with that, that I'm that I'm uh, a great interest to me because I've known Pete a long time and and very cherish and very much cherish his friendship. And what I'm always curious, I always ask the guests, you know. Uh, your beginnings, how you got into college basketball, what what people, you know, have had the biggest impact in your life and, and both personally and, and professionally? Well, I went to college. Uh, I wasn't a great player, but I was on the team. I was a walk-on initially, first two years, and I was fortunate to win a full scholarship my last two years at Fairfield University in Connecticut. And after I finished playing career, which I, I was at the end of the bench, I get in, we're up 20 or down 20 to get the kinks out of my knees, as my dad used to say. So uh, <laughs> I, I want to continue with sports. I couldn't play anymore. So I, uh, you know, I went, I was a teacher and I coached a team. I just kind of got involved with it, enjoyed it. And the guy who changed my life is a guy named Howie Garfinkel. He ran the five-star basketball oh. camp. And sadly, yeah. he passed away about four years ago. And it was probably the greatest basketball camp in the history of the United States. Rick is familiar with it, I know. And players oh, absolutely. that have gone to that camp without, you know, I can't mention them all, but guys uh, like Moses Malone, LeBron James, Chris Paul, uh, Kevin Durant, uh, you know, on and on. Uh, Mo, you know, what's his name? Alonzo Mourning, Patrick Ewing, et cetera. You know, Mark Aguirre, uh, Isaiah Thomas, et cetera. Uh, those, went, those guys to the camp and uh, I was there. I used to work 
uh, two or three weeks at the camp, and he pushed me. He says, hey, you should go into college. I was happy in high school. He says, go ahead. So I, I went to the University of Hawaii. Rick Bettina was there. He worked at the camp also at the five-star basketball camp. And Rick was there two years at Hawaii. I was there one, and uh, that started me off. And then uh, we got thrown into the Pacific. We got fired after my first year. I'm doing a backstroke, and it's piranha fish biting at my rear end. And I wound up at Virginia Military, VMI. And I was there wow. <clears throat> for two years. And we Lexington, had to, Virginia. In Virginia. Lexington, a small town in Virginia. Lexington, Virginia, VMI. It's like West Point or the Naval Academy or the Air Force, but it was a, it's a, uh, a state school. <clears throat> there two years, we had a lot of success, won a lot of games, won 26 and 21 games. Then I went to Villanova. Roly Massimino was a great coach. I was there two years with him, learned more basketball wow. yeah, with Roly yeah, Massimino yeah, yeah. in two years than I ever learned with anybody. He was a brilliant coach. And then Digger Phelps called me at Notre Dame, and uh, I didn't, you know, he, he offered me the job. So I said, well, I like the least – talk with you. So I went out and visited him and I didn't want him to retire. So I was with Digger for five years. So <clears throat> I was a high school coach before that for uh, six years in Brooklyn, New York, high school coach. And then I, I went to college, uh, 10 as an assistant. Then I became a head coach at Xavier University in Cincinnati. I was there for nine years. I was the all-time winningest coach, 202 wins up until a couple of years ago. One of my former players, Chris Mack, who's the head coach of Louisville now, he, he surpassed me. And then I, I wow. went from Lou, from Xavier, <clears throat> as I said, we, we went to the tournament my first six years uh, at Xavier. And that, that had only been done once or twice before that. It's been done more recently. But uh, uh, then I went to Providence in the Big East because I'm a Eastern guy. I talk a little funny, but Eastern comes out in me. And uh, I was at Providence for four years. We had our best team. We went to the Elite Eight in 1997. Uh, we played Arizona. And... Uh, 3.9 seconds to go, we got the ball underneath our own out of bounds, and it scores tied. Whoever wins goes to the final four. We throw the ball out. I, we got it to a little guy named Corey Wright, who we got out of a pothole in New York City, a uh, junior college kid, nice kid, and he was supposed to penetrate and pitch. He shot, uh, hit a brick, ball hit the rim, still embedded into the Birmingham Alameda Coliseum ceiling. <laughs> And we lost in overtime to Arizona by four. We lost in overtime by four to Arizona. And they won, you know, they, they went on to the Final Four, won the national title, as you know. Uh, and then I, uh, after four years at Providence College uh, in, the, in the Big East, I went to uh, University of Virginia in the ACC. I was there seven years. And we did pretty well. You know, we had a winning record, went to the NIT four times, NCAA once, but this didn't win quite enough. So... Uh, they got rid of me after seven years. We, you know, as you said, we had a winning record, 115 and like 95, something like that. But so 30 years is a long time. Uh, 10 as an assistant, 20 as a head coach. Uh, and I loved it. I wish I could still coach, but it's for younger guys. I had opportunities after I left Virginia, but I said, no, nah, I'm kind of burnt out. And I was lucky to get into the TV business. And I've been doing that now. This is my 16th year in television. Wow. Wow, wow. <laughs> that's extremely impressive. Yeah, now, are, you, are you you're with CBS? Right. And with I, CBS, yeah. Uh, CBS, yeah, I'm like seen, yeah, CBS. Yeah, I'm like Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, middle management. I do a lot of CBS Sports Network, cable TV, most of my games. I do a couple for the big CBS. I did a UCLA Southern Cal game last year on big CBS. I have a game this year, Texas, at uh, Texas Tech later in the season in February, and I had a Big CBS game a couple of years ago, Syracuse and Clemson. But mainly, um, you know, cable TV, which is good leagues, the Mountain West Conference, the Atlantic 10, uh, American Athletic Conference with Kelvin Sampson. Brian, you know, your man, uh, you does some of his games. Yeah. So uh, I've been fortunate. You know, yeah. I miss coaching, but I've been fortunate to keep my toes in the water involved in, the, in, in college basketball. Woo. <laughs> uh, fantastic. Fantastic. See, I actually... I actually remember you uh, back when you were Raleigh Massimino's assistant, because I was living in Camden, New Jersey at the time. Uh, I was uh, still in high school, and wow. Villanova was one of those teams that, you know, with Easy Ed, Pickney, and those guys, and, you yeah. know, even, because I, I actually used to play with R.C., um, Raleigh's son. I actually used really? to play with him that? in the yeah. uh, AAU yeah, back then. <laughs> so I, I do remember you from then. 
you know, you, yep. you've had a fantastic career, Coach, for real. Well, thank you, Brian. I was lucky now, we won almost four. If I can ask four... a question. Yeah, go ahead, please. No, no, because I, I was just going to, I was just going to touch on uh, some of the players that you've coached. Um, could you tell us a little bit about some of those players that you had over the years uh, that helped contribute to your success in the game? Yeah, well, no question. Uh, good players make good coaches, as you know, Brian, you know, and CJ, Rick. Uh, mm -hmm. I was fortunate. I had three lottery picks as a head coach. Uh, I had a guy named Tyrone Hill, who was 6'9", about 240. Uh, he played for me at Xavier University yeah. in Cincinnati. Uh, he played with, the, you know, the Philadelphia Sixers when I got to the finals. Uh, against the Lakers, and uh, he played with Iverson and some of those guys. He, and uh, one of the nicest gifts I ever got, <clears throat> Brian, was uh, from uh, Tyrone. He he sent me his uh, <clears throat> NBA All-Star jersey. He made the NBA All-Star team one time in Phoenix, and he probably had five or six in a made up, and he, he sent me one. It, it was in a box. And I, I was at a time at Providence. I had left wow. Xavier. I was, at I was in a box, and Tyrone and I didn't always get along because I said, Tyrone, I want you to graduate. you got to go to study hall unless your grades are great. You know what I mean? And the only time you can miss study hall, I told all the players, if it's a real legitimate reason, it's, if something serious. So Tyrone missed study hall nine times as a senior because his grandmother died nine times. And I said, Tyrone, I said, all due respect, how many grandmothers and grandfathers do you have? I mean, you, you can't keep dying, you know? So we, we always didn't – we hit heads, banked heads a little bit, but – he graduated. He invited me to his wedding, uh, which was a, a nice honor, you know. And uh, uh, you know, and, and you know, he he was a great player. He was uh, the tenth pick. He was a lottery pick, tenth pick uh, in the first round uh, by uh, Don Nelson. You know, when uh, he was coaching the uh, Golden State Warriors, uh, and I had a guy, another guy named Austin Crozier, who was a lottery pick uh, from Providence yeah. and Rick Indiana. Barnes, Indiana, yeah. exactly. Rick Barnes recruited him. And I coached Austin for three years. I was lucky when I got there to Providence, he was going to be a sophomore, rising soft, and he was going to transfer. But lucky I had a guy named Lewis Orr, who was my assistant. And Lewis is 6'9", played yeah, in the NBA for eight years, played for Syracuse, as you know, and Louie and Bowie show. And he was with the Knicks for four years and the Pacers for four. So Louie and I went out to visit Austin Crozier in his home in California and um, – you know, Louis a guy that kept him. You know what I mean? He, he, he you know, Louis, I says, hey, Louis going to work with you. He was in the pros for, you know, eight years. He's a big man. He, he can tell you, the, you know, the different things. And so Austin stayed. I coached him for three years. I was fortunate to get him involved with USA Basketball, and he played well in, on a couple of the USA teams that, you know, with great players, you know, uh, that he, he played with. And uh, he became a lottery pick. You know, Larry Bird's first pick. In the NBA draft was Austin Crozier. Uh, another guy was uh, I coached was Brian Grant. who was another lottery pick who was uh, eighth pick uh, in uh, nineteen. Yeah. yeah, I guess nineteen ninety four with the Sacramento Kings. He's about six eight and a half, six nine. <clears throat> you know, real physical rebounder. Wasn't a finesse guy, but he can rebound and you know score from fifteen feet. And so I was fortunate. I had three lottery picks, and um, as an assistant, I coached you know Joe Klein, who was a, a pretty you know. Uh, pretty good college play, played in the pros, you know, as a, a as a solid guy. John Paxson coached him, uh, you know, who's with the Bulls now and there. He was a, a good pro, played with Michael Jordan, of course, with the Bulls, and a guy named Rory Sparrow, a point guard that played with the Knicks and Atlanta Hawks, uh, you know, coached him. So I, I was blessed to be around some some good players. Uh, Kelly Trapuca, I'm dating myself a little bit, but he was, a when I was at Notre Dame, he was an assistant. Orlando Woolridge was a great player at Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. uh, we were there. Sadly, yeah. passed away a number yeah. of years ago. You know, Pete. So, um, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I was no. going to ask you about a player. Um, <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong, but did you coach God, Shem God? I did. I coached God. Now, how many Let guys can you coach God? Tell you a quick, and we little, quick little yeah. story about him. I got to yeah. Shem God Wells when I yep. went to China, Pete. <laughs> yep. My my first year in China, coaching when I took Lanny's place. Right. Uh, in in uh, Hangzhou, and I had God, Shim God, and Mark Strickland, who had played at Temple. Yep. And, yeah, I remember him. Yep. Uh, uh, God, Shim God, it was Shim God Wells, was his real name. God, Shim God, he became God later. But he, yeah, Shim God Wells. He could do some stuff, and you're thinking, holy Toledo. But again, his off the court antics, um, 
sometimes a little bit overshadowed it. He he had some problems with referees and and uh, but you know he was he was really a great player and I know he had played for you because that was one of the ones yeah. I was hoping. Yeah, he yeah he, you're right. He played for me uh, for two years and he's the guy that get he helped get us to the uh, elite eight and we almost beat uh, Arizona with the national champs with Mike Bibby and Dickerson and Miles Simon and uh, you know they had a, they had a great team. Uh, you know, at Arizona with Lou Olson. But, yeah, we still keep in touch, God, champ, but he's now with the Dallas Mavericks. He's a developmental guy with them. And uh, he's like one of the – does a great job. They love him. They, they take him on the road. Mark Cuban, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, you know, loves him and takes him on the road with him, which is rare for a development guy to go on the road. And he works with – he works with, you know, uh, Luca Brat, you know, Luca. You know, he works with him. He works – he worked with Porzingis, you know. Uh, so, you know, he uh, he's doing a great – came back and graduated from Providence, which is great that the school brought him back. But, yeah, he was a great point guard. He, he could penetrate and uh, he was he was unbelievable. He could really get to the rim and finish, you know. And uh, But I uh, enjoyed coaching him. He, he wanted to play in the pros, just couldn't shoot it great, but can he really he could really penetrate. But uh, I, I was very fortunate. So I, I had great players to win a bunch of games as we were able to do. I think whatever we won, 392 games. I still people 400 because we won a couple of exhibition games, went to Europe, won a couple, but really 392. <laughs> but 63.9% winning percentage. I'm going to throw that out. Whatever it is, but, but we oh, had yeah. great plays. You know, we had great talent, and, you know, we're fortunate to win games because of our talent, not any X's and O's. You know, we, we, we had real good players, and we played very fast. We were up-tempo. We, we, you know, we chucked and ducked. We heaved and leaved, and uh, – as, you know, as long as you play hard, I gave him some freedom. You know, we had some structure. You know, we ran some set plays, but we gave him a lot of freedom, too. Pete, talk a little bit about your opinion uh, about right now in today's college basketball world, about the obviously the pressure these coaches are under now. And, you know, again, I think it all translates back to money. You know, if you're paying somebody these kind of prices, these kind of salaries, you know, you're kind of expecting – but, you know, what, what's your opinion of that, about this pressure on these coaches now? Well, once again, you hit it on the head, Rick, <laughs> getting paid so much money to get two and three million dollars, 1.4, 3.2. My former player, Chris Mack, who's the head coach at Louisville, as you know, he's getting paid four million dollars a year, guaranteed for seven years, whether he wins a game or not, guaranteed. So he's getting $28 million total, you know, $4 million a year. So that's astronomical. I mean, that, so there's tons of pressure on, on the kids. Now, once again, not everybody's getting that, but uh, a lot of pressure on the coaches. And and, uh, and unfortunately, there's cheating going on. How much, I don't know. But when people want to keep their job, the assistants are getting, you know, four or 500000 some of them, two hundred, three. you know, a lot of money. So if, if it comes between hey, cheating and keeping my job or not, some of them will break rules. So how much, I don't know. But money causes a lot of problems, Rick, in college basketball. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, it, it, the stories just, that she, just on that. are notorious, especially Sorry. in D.C. Uh, some of the stuff that used to go on back in the day. I love listening to those stories because, you know, they're somewhere in all that there's some truth involved in it. And oh, yeah. And it's phenomenal. Back in the day with the coaches oh, yeah. through the SEC, especially, but it was all over the country, but SEC, because I'm more familiar with the ACC and the SEC. So, you know, a uh, couple schools in the ACC are, are beyond reproach, like North Carolina and uh, Duke. You know, they, they never cheat, but, you know, uh, some of the others may be a little suspect, but, you know, some schools, you know, they have, I think you, you're a victim of your own success, like you had. Yeah. had figure. I mean, you came yeah. in. That but right. just oh, and now they expect just they on that. Sorry, just they on that point, they're though, they're coach. Um, and I guess this is a two part question. Can, can you hear me? I guess this is yeah, a, a two part question. Uh, first part of it. Do you think that it's warranted today? These coaches making that kind of insane amount of money. But then at the same time, do you think that's also a result? Guys like yourself who have success and these colleges, you know, and, and I guess the, 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 the coaches that kind of laid the groundwork for the success of a lot of these programs, 
that have moved on, these colleges now gravitate or want to gravitate back towards that success. So they're just throwing money away, trying to, you know, lure in the big fish. And regardless of what kind of results they're getting, it's, you know, the big fish aren't pretty much making it all happen because, you know, I, and, I, and, I, and I know there's this younger movement going on, but I guess you can't really, you know, account for experience. Do you, do you think that, and, and I know I'm kind of answering my own question. It seems like I'm answering my own question. I've, I've lost my mind today. But in respect of that, what's your view in terms of these coaches being warranted to receive that amount of money as opposed to the coaches that laid the groundwork for this to be the way it is today? Well, good question. It's a progression. Like when I got to Virginia, a guy named Terry Holland, who was the uh, athletic director at the time. And he hired me and he was a great coach. And he had Ralph Sampson, went to the final four with Ralph and was the number one team in the country for a couple of years with Ralph and had great success. Well, I was making maybe three times what he was making. So he might've been making 150, 200,000. I was making like three, four times what he was making, like seven, 800,000. Now these guys today are making three and four times or more what I'm making. So unfortunately it's gotten bigger and bigger and it's gotten out of hand. And I mean, coaches, uh, you know, they earn their money, but you know, $4 million, that's a lot of money when you have, you know, poverty all over the world and different problems. So, um, you know, coaches, you know, yeah. uh, Every day you, you, you're, you're worrying about it. is a player of mine going to get a DUI or get in a fight in a bar or beat somebody up or steal, you know, do something foolish because it's your, you know, it's your head. So coaches deserve to make a lot of money, but I think it's gotten out of hand and it's created the monster. And, and what happens is that the coaches and the assistants want to keep their job. So if they have to break rules, they'll break rules. How much you're doing, I don't know, but, you know, they, they want to yeah. keep their money. So, hey, if I don't cheat, I might get fired. So, hey, I'm going to cheat and take my chances. So, uh, and that's what a lot of guys are doing. And, and it's, it's sad. Uh, but I, I hear what you're saying. Just, but that's the progression. As they said, I made more than Terry Holland. These guys, you know, are going up and up the, the stepladder. Where it stops, I don't know. But it's, it's supply and demand. People love it. And TV loves it. And they sell products. So, uh, but coaches, you know, they, they earn a lot of money. But I think it's getting out of hand you know, what they're making right now, unfortunately. Well, but you know, I've always said that a person's only worth it if somebody's willing to pay it. And yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you think well, about it's that. A, yeah, it, it's supply and demand. You make it, <laughs> yeah, true. Exactly. If you're making a million dollars, like he's like he's NBA guys now, I mean, you're making money for somebody else. And he's owners and TV, so they're making, making their money. But, you know, their life expectancy, their longevity, longevity is very short. You know, yep. I, I think it's good. If people are willing to, it's entertainment. This is entertainment. Yep, mm. definitely. Entertaining and, you know, the games are on TV and NCAA is making eight, nine hundred million dollars a year in an NCAA tournament. You know, and they're making a fortune. NCAA is making it. So I just think the players should get something. I mean, they're, they're the performers. They're the ones that are doing it. I, I'm Maybe I'm in the minority, but I, I think they should get a stipend. It's a complex issue. I don't have a complete answer, but I think athletes should get you know, for nine months, $150, $125 every month to help, you know, pay for, you know, meals or get a nice pair of shoes or, you know, go out to lunch, you know, when, you know, without the COVID or go out to dinner with a friend or so. So, because um, they're making all this money and the NCAA and, and the coaches are making it, which I was a big part of. ADs are making it. NCAs making it. Schools are making it. Well, what about the players? They're not, you know, they're getting an education, which is wonderful. Don't get me wrong. But they're also providing attainment, and times change, so you got rules should change, and and I, I think the rules should change. Agreed. That's a great. But, that's a but great. I think. I think when you. Point. I think when you start paying players, though, I, I mean, I'm the devil's advocate here. I think you're opening up Pandora's box because the mid-major schools, the Stetsons, the Bethune Cookman, the, the historically black colleges, the small college, they can't compete with that. They can't compete with with uh, UCLA and Maryland and Virginia, and I think you can't do it. So I mean, you know, there's got to be a there's got to be a cutoff here somewhere. 
Well, one hundred twenty-five dollars, okay. Rick, is, is not a lot of money. I mean, one hundred twenty-five dollars, right. roughly one hundred fifty dollars a month for nine months, the school year. And uh, once again, uh, you know, they can't compete right now. I mean, Setson's not going to compete with a UCLA or or a Michigan or somebody like that. So uh, I, I agree, it's a complex issue. What you do for the men, you got to do for the women. But my my thinking is, I'm a little different in that the schools that pay the players only if they're making money. It's quid pro quo. In other words, if the school administration is making money, right, making money through these players, they're providing, yeah. and there is a plus, whether it's football or basketball, their, their gross product is making money, then the players should get something. Stipend $125 a month or whatever. Yeah, women I agree women and men. Women and men. But if they're losing, if they're not doing well, right, well, then, you, you know, then they don't. Maybe you give them. 25 or 50 bucks or something, but you don't give them, you know what I mean? Because they're not making money. They're not being successful. You don't can't play the players, but that's just the way the world is. So if you're making money, I think they should be able to get a small stipend, a small, it's not a lot of money today, $125 a month. So uh, that's especially, my thoughts. But, especially if they're getting you know. TV time, because, you know, that helps make, that helps generate a lot of revenue. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, they're, they're it should making, be shared. They're making hundreds. They're making hundreds of millions of dollars. Okay, on yeah. just a, on these schools, and, and I get, and I do get it. You know, the the, the NC two A is not going to, you know, release that money anytime soon. They they're going to try and get as much out of it as they possibly can. But there are several ways of helping the athletes. I mean, in terms of you you can profit share if you're making almost a billion dollars a year. You can profit share across the 360 NC2A Division I schools. You can uh, also, in terms of, you know, things like I'm a, I'm a university and I have a player, you know, uh, God Sham God, who's, who's a star on the court, but as a school, I can sell God Sham God's jersey in my student union or in my, my school store and make money off of his off of his image as a university but if god sham god went and tried to sell his own jersey oh well we're going to penalize you for you trying to sell your jersey or signing an autograph for for money i think that's 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 a system that needs to be looked at because like you're saying coach i, these, I think it has to look at i think that's something. i think they changed it brian yeah no you're right i agree with you did they thank you I think now they, did, they, did they change it? Yeah, I think that was one of the things that got changed. I'm not positive on it, but I think so. Um, but, you know, here's the other thing. What about the um, tennis team and the baseball team and the golf team and gymnastics team and the soccer team? Are we going to pay them as well? Yeah, you pay all scholarship it athletes. Should be, okay. and, it should be dedicated okay. to the sport. Yep, men and women, they all yep. get it. All full scholarship, men and women. They get it. And now, once again, $125, they're making millions and millions these schools. The NCA, they got to give up yeah. more money. They're going to delegate more money to the conferences. And you know what I mean? And once again, if you're not doing well, well, no, hey, you're not winning. You're not successful. You're not getting TV games, et cetera. Then you, you don't make it. So uh, that's that's just my thought. In other words, there's yeah. got to be a rubric. It's a complex thing. I'm not smart enough to get a complete answer, but these players have to get something because they're generating all this profit mm -hmm. for people, and then they're getting an education, which is wonderful, but they, they deserve more than that. Yeah, I agree. Agree. You're right. Agree. Agree. Hey, look, we got about 10 minutes left here. I uh, do want to ask you, What's it like being in, at uh, CBS and doing what you're doing as a like sports analyst? Or? Yeah, I'm an analyst and I love doing it. I, I miss coaching. I wish I could still coach, but it's for younger guys and yeah. et cetera. But I, 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 I love it. I prepare like I prepare for a game. I'm tonight uh, when you guys, I know it's noon or one o'clock over in Australia, but uh, when Rick's sleeping, I'm working. You know what I mean? I'm going to go watch some games tonight. <laughs> uh, I got a game at nine o'clock. Okay. I'm going to watch uh, 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 San Diego State and Wyoming. Then 11 o'clock, I'm watching Fresno State uh, against New Mexico because I have them games coming up next week, you know, a couple of those games. So I love preparing for it. I love, you know, I, this year we can't go to practices because of the COVID, so they're being very, you know, strict with that. But I love preparing, watching games, and trying to help coaches from a distance without being a, a know-it-all, saying, hey, you know, if they, you know, think about this, maybe this can help you, whatever, without, you know, so I love doing it. I miss it. And I, a lot of the guys that I coached against are, are coaches now. Like, uh, for example, the Marquette coach, 
uh, Steve Wojciechowski, he played the Duke when I coached uh, against Duke in the NCAA tournament with God Sham. God, we were fortunate to beat them, uh, you know, so, and, uh, you know, people like that. Yeah, you uh, those you know, guys. Uh, yeah, those guys. Um, you know, that, so I know some of these guys and some of these guys are assistants. Uh, uh, like, you know, like Louis Orr, one of my former assistants is assistant at Georgetown with Pat Ewing, you know, so uh, it's, it's fun uh, still being around the game. That's my world. I don't know much about real estate, stocks, bonds, you know, all that stuff, <laughs> politics. I, don't, I know a little bit about basketball and uh, I, I'm fortunate to still be doing it. And I get paid a ham sandwich every week. So if you need a ham sandwich, I'll, I'll send it to you. But uh, <laughs> good man, good man. <laughs> no, no, they take good care of me. They pay me well, but uh, you know, I do it because I love it, and uh, I'm fortunate to be doing it. And uh, you know, I've been doing it now; it's my 16th year doing it. So I'm very fortunate to be working for CBS. Once again, I'm not a big shot, but I, I enjoy being part of of that. It's a class organization with really good people. Awesome. <laughs> I got Probably. one point. I was doing some research on you, uh, Coach, and. Yeah. Tell me, how does getting inducted into the New York City Basketball Hall of Fame? Boom. Tell me about that, yeah. please. That was a great that, honor. That I never great, thought, yeah. That's a great yeah. honor. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is a great honor. I never thought I'd be in that, you know, with, uh, you know, Kenny Anderson. I got inducted with him, you know, and, and a couple other people. And uh, Kenny was a great player. And, you know, I got in as a coach, of course. Yeah. But it was a great honor. I mean, having all those – Great, great people, uh, you know, in the New York City Hall of Fame. Lenny Wilkins, you know, people, you know, like that. And uh, Larry Brown, the coach, a great coach. And, uh, you know, a lot of great people. In New York City, uh, basketball is, is super important there. Uh, you know, so, uh, yeah. you know, Lou Karnasek is in from St. John's. Who's a, who was a legend there. He's in, the, you know, the Hall of Fame. Yeah. And many, 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 many great wow. players uh, uh, you know, uh, um, Pearl Washington, a great player for Syracuse, is in as a player. And there's so many yeah. uh, great, great players that, that played there, you know, uh, for, the, for the Knicks and uh, or different players. You know, so it was a great honor. I, I, I never thought I was very humble by it. And, I, you know, and once again, I got in because I was fortunate to coach great players. And yet, yet when you have three lottery picks, as we did, we had another guy who was just out of the lottery. Eric Williams played for me at Providence. I inherited him from Rick Barnes and he went out yep. to play with the Celtics for a while and had a good career. And he helped us yep. my first year at Providence. So I was fortunate to coach some great players and that's why I was able to get in. So I, I was humbled by it. I never thought I'd get in honestly, but uh, it, it was, it was a great honor to be in being coming from New York city guys like Joe Lapchick is in. It was a, a legend, you know, a retired guy and uh, Red Holzman who coached the Knicks for a long time. Yeah. And, yeah. Some, some great people uh, yeah. that, that played the, you know, Bill Bradley who played for the Knicks is in there. So, uh, yeah. you know, a lot of people that, wow. that, you know, just legends. So I, you know, I'm, I get in the back elevator, you know, in the maintenance store, but I get in, you know, so uh, <laughs> uh, but, but I was fortunate to, fortunate to be a small part of the New York city basketball hall of fame. It was a great honor for me. Wow. wow. That, that's awesome. Man. That, that New York city. It's, it's like no other place. Um, it's just unfortunately the Knicks aren't aren't uh, kind of they're, but they're getting better. But you know that's that's tough on the New York New York fans. I know. Yeah, or, they've been or, down Rick a long time. They've been down. I've been you know suffering with them. But they got a, a great coach now. Uh, coach Thibodeau is uh, you know he'll get the most out of his talent. So I think we're slowly going to climb up. We're getting better. Eight and ten, eight and eleven, something like that. Now eight and eleven, I think. So we're getting better. We're still not good, but. Uh, you know, they got a good coach and hopefully they'll, they'll continue to build. But uh, New York's a special place and they, they love basketball. I mean, the Garden, the team, as you said, Rick, have been down for a long time. They still get a sellout almost every thing. You know what I mean? They go, people love basketball yeah. in New York. It's, that's a city well, game. They love basketball. Well, even the college team with Fordham and St. John's and all the yep. schools in there, they're, you know, they're, they are prospering. Yep. Oh, yeah. They, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, they've been struggling, but uh, St. John's, they got a good coach now. Mike Anderson, who came in, was at Arkansas for a while and UAB in Missouri. He's a good coach. Yeah. So he's getting them, he's getting them going. He's a really nice man. He goes by the rules, which is good. You know, he's a, an honest man, family guy, great guy. So uh, I think he'll get them going. He, he, he's exciting style. They press and they run. And, uh, you know, Nolan Richardson, the 40 minutes of hell when he was at Arkansas, he was an assistant there. <laughs> you know, it's a fun style. That's that's the style they had. 
he's putting that in New York, and he, I think he's going to get some good kids, and uh, I think he's going to do very well. It's going to take a little time like anything else. Man. Yeah. Totally awesome. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Is that uh, a, well, I tell you, it's a, that's a hotbed of players in New York. There's a hotbed yeah, of players a lot, a lot of there, kids. man. You know what's happening now, though, unfortunately, Brian, CJ, and Rick, a lot of the kids the last 10 years or so, they go to high school for a year or two, then they wind up going to a prep school up in New England or Oak Hill Academy down in Virginia or, or some yeah. other place, different, you know, different prep schools, Florida, yeah, all over the country they go to different prep schools. So if they can keep the kids in New York a little bit more, you know what I mean, then they'll, they'll have more of a infinity yeah. towards things, you know what I mean, more connection with the Johnnies. But uh, I think Mike Anderson's going to do a great job, just going to take a little time and, you know, uh, this year they're getting better, and then I think next year they'll be, you know, much better. And in the fourth year, I think they're going to be really good. Yeah, hey, yeah, Rick, go Rick, Rick, this is this is getting crazy, guys. We're going to have to wrap this up, but Rick, this is getting crazy, man. Looks like we got to get one more seat on that damn plane. <laughs> well, I'm sitting beside I'm sitting beside Pete. <laughs> we got to get one more seat on that plane to get over here oh. for that coaching camp now. So it looks like so, we're going to have to add Pete yeah. to this. Oh. Oh, well, I'd love to go. Oh, yeah. I, I'd love to go. i never been to Australia. I heard great things about I coach against Australia. I didn't mention that. I know we got to go. In 1994, <laughs> I was an assistant with Dream Team Number 2 with, you know, Alonzo Morning and uh, Shaquille O'Neal. And wow. we had some, you know, yeah. Reggie, Reggie Miller. I was an assistant with Don Nelson was the head coach, Don Chaney. From the wow. you know NBA guy he was a great guy he was just and Rick yeah, Majera, from Temple yeah, yeah. Rick Majera sadly passed away he was and I was the you know the 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 other assistant low guy in the totem pole but I, I was we played Australia in 1994 wow. in the World Championships up in Toronto and they had a great team you know they certainly had a great kid to play at Seton Hall it was a terrific player for them who could really score uh, Andrew Gaze and you know they gave us a good battle yeah, Gaze. Yeah. Gaze was great and. Yeah. Uh, uh, yep. they, they love basketball, I know, in Australia. So oh, I, yeah. I'd be honored to go one day and, you know, you well, never know. And uh, I can speak at a clinic. I might put people to sleep. But, uh, uh, you know, hopefully I I, uh, I did a clinic over in Greece a number of years ago over in Saloniki, you know, and they had a translator. And uh, it was fun. A bunch of coaches from all over Europe. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Look, man, leave, leave it yeah. with me. We're going to ro we're gonna have to rock it and roll it all Yeah, up that's here. the plan. And, but, uh, but, gentlemen, uh it was great, and Pete, we will keep you in mind for sure. <laughs> All right, well, thank guys. you, CJ. All yeah, right, thank guys. you, Brian. Thank thanks, you, for, Rick. Thanks for coming on, and and Pete, thank you thanks, everyone man. for checking out ABA One on One. Yes. <laughs> Th thanks for having me. Thanks a lot. Right. Thank you, Pete. All thank right, you. guys. Okay. Peace. Thanks, Pete. Peace. Thank you. Sassy B Worldwide Productions. With over 25 years of entertainment experience, we have done it all. Celebrity appearances, red carpet events, image consultation and branding design. Our clients range from American football stars to Hollywood celebrities and everyone in between. Want to make a splash in the entertainment industry? Then it's time to get sassy. SassyBeeWorldwide.com Well, that's going to do it for this week. Remember, you can keep up with every episode by subscribing via our website. Follow us on social media and tell your friends about us. Next week, new guests, more basketball tips, more basketball stories about the game we all love. Till then, be safe and keep your eyes on the ball. Bones.